news, yeah. <clears throat> All right, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Just wearing the only Dixon that fits over this big dorky cast on my hand, American Vapor Manufacturers Association. We remember that name from the video last week of Amanda Wheeler leaving the American Vaping Manufacturers Association. Well, I said in that video that they would just continue on like normal. And yeah, they're continuing on like normal. Not only that, but they're having what seems to be a large scale virtual moderated Q&A session with tobacco harm reduction advocates. They're calling it the future of vaping in the USA, a conversation with FDA's Dr. Brian King. The AVM, the American Vapor Manufacturers Association, somehow got an audience with Brian King, the new director of the Center for Tobacco Products, the FDA's CTP. Allie Bonner, Greg Connolly, and guest Dr. Brian King. You can register for the event. I'll put a link down in the description where you can register it. For, but, but more important than that, you can ask a question. You can submit a question on that same website. Now, I'm assuming that Greg Connolly is going to be vetting these questions. So they're just not, you know, read in chronological order. They're probably gonna pick the best questions out of the bunch, but I think everybody should submit a question. And if you wanna get your question up to the top and up get read, you know, make it as professional and well-spoken and polite as possible. Don't get on there and just go, oh, Brian King, you know, how do you like taking all that money from Bloomberg and Big Tobacco? Be calm. Be professional, tell your story, ask a question. It might get asked to Brian King, the new director of the CTP. I think this is a really big deal and a really huge opportunity. I don't necessarily think it's going to be, you know, the the, the smoking bullet that, that solves all the vaping in the United States of America. What did I say, smoking bullet? I should have said silver bullet or smoking gun. I don't think it's going to be either one of those things that's going to, you know, save vaping in the United States of America. But I think this is a huge opportunity. And I honestly think this could go a really long way of Director Brian King, Dr. Brian King of the CTP, hearing from the vapors, you know, nothing about us without us. I think we should do this. I think we should I think we should submit questions and all watch this thing. At least I will be and if you don't, I'll report back on how it is. Brian King before he was the head of Center for Tobacco Products, he was at CDC. Now there are a lot of criticisms around Brian King and his handling of Evali. He hasn't been known to be exactly friendly to vaping. He he likes to exaggerate harms. But look, Mitch Zeller, the former director of the Center for Tobacco Products, was a lawyer. At least Brian King is a doctor, an epidemiologist. He might understand this stuff better. I'm going to put a link in the description to the American Vapor Manufacturers Association website to register for the future of vaping in the USA with Dr. Brian King. I'll put a link in the description as well to Filter Mag article written by Alex Norcia, bringing up some of those criticisms about Brian King. Look, to, and to be fair, he did also recently say kind of a positive thing about vaping. This graphic is sort of circulating around Twitter, Food and Drug Administration, markedly less risk. He did say, I'm fully aware of the misperceptions that are out there and aren't consistent with the known science. We do know that e-cigarettes as a general class have markedly less risk than a combustible cigarette product. That picture cuts off the whole quote, but he goes on to say, that said, I think it's very critical that we inform any communication campaigns using science and evidence. It has to be very carefully thought out to ensure that we're maximizing impact and avoiding unintended consequences. To me, the unintended consequences are people who smoke, not switching. And I think to Brian King, the unintended consequences is any youth use. I'm curious to the line we're gonna get to where what is the acceptable level of youth use in order to save literally millions of adult lives. Like, what's the hard line in the sand? Does it exist? These are good questions for Brian King, if you ask me. Another thing I saw that is just kind of shocking and super weird and gross, but an Ohio eighth grader got strip searched over a possible vape pen at school. Strip searched, like 
straight up strip searched an eighth grader because she might have had a vape pen at school. Evidently there was some other things involved in here and that's why there's a lawsuit. Rightfully so, there should be a lawsuit. They're saying they violated her civil rights, her constitutional rights, absolutely they did, over a vape pen. I guess this is the America that organizations like Parents Against Vaping and E-Cigarettes and Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids want for our kids? Evidently, the story goes like this. This, lo this young girl, she goes to school. Her friend comes up and says, hey, do you wanna hit this vape pen? She says, no, I do not wanna hit that vape pen. She says, okay, can I store it in your locker? Evidently, the girl reluctantly agreed to let her friend store the vape pen in her locker. A few hours later go by, they pull her out of class, they search her locker, no vape pen, they take her into the nurse's aid office, strip search her, no vape pen. That seems ridiculous to me, as does the idea of strip searching someone to look for a vape pen, something that causes no violence, no harm, no damage. The only reason that this school is so freaked out about vape pens, you know, being in their school is directly because of the moral panic being constantly pushed by, by organizations like PAVE and Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids. I think they're just as culpable of this girl getting strip searched as the school is. The lawsuit claims emotional distress. Yeah, absolutely emotional distress. I remember being an eighth grader. I was smoking cigarettes at the time. I think that seventh and eighth grade were some of literally the worst years of my, of my childhood life that I can possibly remember. What is not clear in any of the reporting I've seen about this Ohio eighth grader getting strip searched is what was the vape pen? Vaping is a verb. Was it a THC pen? Was it a CBD pen? Was it a Delta-8 pen? Or was it a nicotine pen? The difference of which all of those is, is pretty drastic and different. Thanks. Thanks for that moral panic, Pave. Thanks for that moral panic, Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. That's why this eighth grader got strip searched, is because of moral panic. Links are in the description. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay smoke-free. You know, every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so.